go to 20now.com slash member slash welcome email, which should also be on the dashboard right here. If you just hover over member dashboard and go down to your welcome email, this page will pop up. And basically this is where you get to edit your welcome email. Everybody that opts in using your link, your Facebook uh, button on your 20now page, when they come to one of these webcasts, just like the one that you're watching right now, this email gets sent to them. Now, if you want to use the company default, no problem. You just leave this clicked right here where it says use company default. And the standard email invite will be sent out. And when you first come to this page, the email that you see pre-filled in is the company default. So you can use it as a guideline if you want and change it however you want to, word, reword things, or you can just completely delete this thing. Like if you're a company, like I always use um, Juice or you know, 8-Track eight, eight Tape of the Month Club. Um, if your 8-Track Tape of the Month Club already has some emails that really work very well, then you can just copy and paste their um, text directly in and run with it. Um, otherwise, uh, you, you can use this as an example. It's really easy to change things out. Like so, for example, if you don't want my ugly mug up there, uh, which, hey, if it's yours, um, I don't know why you would, you would want my ugly mug up there if it's your personalized email then you can just click here click on image and the and just put your link to your particular um, image that you want and it'll automatically fill in the width it'll fill in the height and the alignment I usually do it to the left what that means is the image will be on the left side and the text will be on the right and my image already has this little shadow border on it. Um, I just happen to have a little graphics editor that made that easy. Um, and so I don't actually have to put H space or uh, horizontal spacing on it or vertical spacing. But if yours doesn't have that little uh, like shadow border or whatever, notice what happens if I go to H space and I type in 10. Notice how it just slides things over. Maybe if I want to go 20 it pushes it a little bit further out. So that, that would automatically give a border because typically if you leave that as zero or nothing, um, wow, it didn't actually move it back. Let me put it, there we go. If, if you leave it as zero or put nothing there, the, the edge of those words will be right up against the edge of your picture. So the way to get rid of that is you just go to H space and it'll, it'll whatever you put in there, it'll, it'll push it all the way out. The other one is V space or vertical space. So this is the spacing that's underneath it. And again, you know, you can just increase this number to whatever you want and it will, it will push the text down um, appropriately. So again, though, my image already has a border on it. So I don't, I don't have to, to uh, put any values there. If you want your Richard. images, yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry for interrupting. I thought you were no, that's finished good. about that. Um, that's, that's brilliant because, um, Many people that use um, Google and send images through Google, the images won't come out. Usually it's a waste of time trying to send images, but this works in Google and it's great for introducing yourself. Somebody might sign up with you and don't really know who you are and, and having your image there point straight away so they get, can get to see you and get to get to know who you are, that's just brilliant. Yeah. Um yeah, it, it, you know, I'm I, actually I'm glad that you said that about getting to see who they are. R the best way to market is to to be personable. So you, by putting your own image here, you're building a personal relationship with them right off the bat because they get familiar with viewing you and seeing what you look like. And then when they read what you put, um, they're actually reading it as if, oh. <laughs> Edgar just got joined in. Hey, Edgar, I'm going to have to put you on mute, buddy. I hope that worked. Um, they get used to seeing your face, and then when they read, if you, if you write the same way you talk, then when they read it, they read it as if... Um, how can I say they, they, they read it, saying it to them. Yeah, as if, as if you're... Yeah, that's right, as if you're actually talking to them. Um, so it, it just really builds a lot to put your own image in there. Um, so another thing, let me go over the alignment. If I put not set, you'll notice it automatically clears out all the space next to it, and it won't put the text until like the very bottom line next to the image. 
And if I put it to the right, then it puts all the text over on the left side and my image all the way over on the right. So whatever way works for you. Um, for me, I just put it on the left. Seems to be kind of common. That'll be one of the first things they'll see. They see your image, and then they begin to read the text next to it, and it's as if you're talking to them. Also, if you want to use images, uh, maybe some other images in your um, later on in your text, you can also put a link here with a URL, for example, that goes straight to your affiliate link. Um, so you could put in an image, big button that would say click here, you know, and then go over to link and you can put in your affiliate link and basically when they would click on that image, they would be using your affiliate link to go to your juice program, your eight track tape of the month or, you know, whatever your particular program is. So um, real easy to use. By the way, this thing automatically filled in the width and the height for me, by the way. So I didn't have to fill that in. It automatically calculated it for me. And it'll automatically calculate that for you. So all I actually do is I take, I copy and paste right here the image, uh, URL to my image, and then I go down and I set my alignment to the left, and that's all I do. And then I click OK. And, and it's done. Uh, yeah, because I monkeyed around with it. It's wanting to make sure I really want to close it. So... Um, that's brilliant so, for branding yourself. Yes. Yeah, which is really, that's what 20 Now is all about. It's not about branding me. It's not about branding 20 Now. It's about branding you and helping you build your own following. And as we continue to roll out uh, more changes, which are coming, um, you'll see that the entire purpose of 20 Now ultimately is to kind of disappear and that people would not even know that you're using 20 now, that it, it's just all about you, and they just think that you got this awesome marketing machine um, that you made. Um, and go ahead, tell them you made it. It's fine with me. You can take all the credit. Um, and I'll let you answer the support emails as well. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, some of the other things you can do, most people are pretty familiar with this stuff, but I'll just go ahead and cover it. So, like, um, you can highlight text, and you can, you can notice it's already on bold. I can take bold off, and, you know, it goes back to normal text. Or you can click I for italics. Um, you can do bullets. I don't want to do a bullet point right there, but I, I'll come down here. I'll just mess this one up. And you can just do like some numbering, um, you know, making some bullet points. Uh, it's, so it's really versatile. If you want to scoop text over, then you can use this to, to indent it. Um, and if you need it to go back, you can just go back like that. Uh, if you want to quote something, you can do like that. Notice how it makes a special line, a quote line, and it makes the entire thing in italics. So like if you want to quote something from your company or you want to say something like, hey, this is what people are saying about our 8-track of the month company, and then you, you want to put something that, um, you know, uh, some of the customers are saying or how awesome quality the 8-track tapes actually have or, you know, the health benefits of your juice program that from from a doctor or from a trade magazine or whatever then you can just put it in quotes um, and it makes it look really nice like that um, so we covered image those are pretty basic the other one is link so you can highlight uh, a URL and most by the way most um, mail programs if you just put the URL without coming up here and clicking on the link it'll still work because like Gmail actually will read the email and figure out, oh, that's a hyperlink, and it'll make it where they can click on it. But in this case, uh, we actually use a tracking link uh, for the company default, and you just click link, and it has this really weird stuff, you know, hash and another URL and all that stuff. Ordinarily, you would just put your own link, like this is a link to the webcast, so you just put in the link, and it will automatically figure out that it's HTTP over on this side, on the protocol side for you. And notice how it just takes it off of the URL, so it's not even there anymore. Um, and that's just normal. That's just the way this thing works. Um, and so you just put your link there, tell it okay, and now when you send the email, if they click on that link, that's where they'll go. So it's just that simple. You just highlight it and click link, and then put in your URL. and away she goes. Tell them about Target as well um, because that's very important. Okay, yeah, you know I thought about that but one, so I'll cover what that is but basically when you're reading it in an email viewer the Target won't matter as much but what Target is is that if you typically want to tell it to do a new window which is underscore blank right there and what that means is when they click that link 
the page they're on will stay like it is and that link will open up a new tab and the your page will open up in that next tab when they close that tab they'll come back to your your email again and they'll see it there now most modern email viewers like gmail and stuff like that yahoo msn um, outlook and all that stuff they automatically stick that in there so that if you forget to put new window underscore blank the 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 mailer will still do it for you. So I mean, because Gmail's not going to go away. If you go to any one of your Gmail emails and click a link, it's always going to open up in a new tab because Gmail knows you know that you didn't mean to close Gmail and go to whatever that is. But it, uh, if you want to play it safe, you can always just come click on target and change it to underscore blank and like Louise is recommending there, and and it'll work just fine. But that's that's what target is. It's really handy when you're editing your web pages. Um, and you definitely want to use it all the time on web pages. Definitely, definitely, because otherwise, if you click it and it's not sending it to a, another tab, then you're taking them away from the page that you're showing. So, yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. So as you can see, this is it's pretty full featured, but it's dead simple to use. It's not too complicated. Um, some of the other things, like if you highlight this, you can change this to. Um, like heading one, which is just really big, or heading two, you can change it to heading three. You know, each one is, is smaller and smaller. They've got uh, like a pre-formatted text. The way pre-formatted will look is, come on, is like that. It, you can notice that the text is a little bit different. It's, it's a mono space. In other words, every letter takes exactly the same amount of space, whereas the other font in the rest of the email, like you can see that the I is a much smaller space, but here you can see that the I actually takes just as much space as all the rest of the letters. So it, it looks like it's uh, under a different little format. Um, so you can you can play around with that. I, I don't know why they have one that's called address, but it just makes it all italicized, um, which is okay with me. But typically you're going to always just use normal or sometimes you may use one of the heading ones if you want things of a different size. And it, typically, if I'm going to use a heading, I'll use like two or three um, because heading one is just absolutely so big. Um, and those really, these heading um, tags are left over from uh, editing on web pages. So that's why they put them in there. They don't mean that much in an email like they do on a web page except for the size um, of the text that's in, in the email. And you can also change the text color. I know some some people love to, you know, send out emails with like big red statements, you know, or that's me. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, well, I mean, like some some emails, it looks like the the uh, the car salesman, the used car salesman with a plaid jacket, you know, and he's out, he's out waving traffic down, you know, with honk, he's got a little clown horn, you know, and he's honking at the traffic that's going by. Um, so you, if that's your style, you know, it's working for you, that's cool. Um, you can definitely do that with this. So, you know, you can highlight stuff any way you want. And so this one changes the actual text color. The one next to it changes the background. If you want to see your email in full screen, you can do that. Um, you know, edit it in full screen or click and come back. It also has a spell check on it. And you just tell it to enable S-C-A-Y-T. Don't ask me what that stands for. I have no idea. I have to Google it. I just know that it's some kind of spell check thing. Um, now, that it, I'm very happy about. <laughs> it, yeah, and I probably need it more than anybody because I'm dyslexic. Yeah, see, it doesn't think I spelled jarhead correctly. Notice it puts the little red squiggle lines on there. Facebook, it thinks it's wrong, which, by the way, um, it, it probably wants me to do an uppercase, uh, and, and it, I may have to give it a minute, or maybe it's <laughs> Maybe it's just not going to get Facebook right at all. But by the way, Facebook is a branded name and it is lowercase f. Um, so you typically do not type in Facebook with an uppercase f. Um, so like you notice it's it's uh, hitting me on 20 now. And um, I thought that it would tell me, it would give me another suggestion. But maybe, nope, maybe it's not going to do that. Um on, on mine. I'm not sure why. But but nevertheless, so it, it does have a spell check and it'll tell you, you know, that something doesn't look like, doesn't look correct with the word jarhead or whatever. Um, which, of course, we know that's correct. And if you get tired of looking at the little red squid lines, you can just tell it to disable. 
and it had some options and stuff there, but t really all you have to do is just turn it on and off and um, let it take care of all the rest. So then when you're done with the HTML, this again is the HTML version, every email that we send has two parts to it. It's got an HTML part so the people that use new um, uh, email viewers, this is what they see. You can put images, you can color the text, you can make um, text bold or italic and underline and all those good things. Um, you know, and kind of spice it up and that it, this is exactly the way that they see it when it gets sent to them. Or um, some of the older browsers or excuse me, email viewers, which I don't really know of anybody that would still be using one, but it's still kind of standard protocol that you send it out there. You also send a text part of the email and you basically just, you can click in here anywhere, right click, Oh no, that um, the spell check stuff is still going to come up. So you just control A, which highlights everything. Control C to copy it. Come down here, control A, and then control V to paste it. And the only thing you have to watch out for in the text one is doing like a, a line break like this because you don't want um, the lines to get too long. I am working on an automated uh, little button that I want to put in here that you could just like press and it would say copy HTML to text and it would just automatically pull all of this and stick it in here for you and put the correct margins. But if you notice about where I'm going, if you wanted to count, it'd be around 70 characters across. Um, and some of the things that it doesn't do is like, notice how this has one, two, three next to these bullet points. It left those off. It doesn't know what to do with those. So you just got to come in here and type one, two, three. And you may want to check your links. Just make sure that this link still looks right. Like up here, if you make a link like um, right here where it says see the schedule, if I turn that up here into a link where it was, um, oops, still talking there, 20now.com slash webcast for them to see the schedule. Um, yeah, and it messed it up uh, because it was still typing in there. Man. So control Z, by the way, works really well. <laughs> so all I do is just type control Z a couple times and it undid the mistake. So I'm kind of glad I made that. I'm going to go back and click the link again, click in here and man, it's doing it to me again. Come on now. All right. It's not going to get the best of me. I'm going to click around. Yes. So, Richard, okay. you're, saying, uh -huh. you're saying that everything that goes into that HTML has to be into the text area underneath the HTML editor. It, it doesn't have to be, but, um, it, you know, actually sometimes when I do the text part, because I know it displays differently, I will word it differently um, because it doesn't make sense. Like right here, like for example, if we, let, I'll show you with this one. So I'm putting this link in right here where it says see the schedule and in the HTML version if that's what they're viewing they could click this and it would go right to the webcast where they would see the schedule but it, in the yeah. yeah but down in the text where it says um, see the schedule well it doesn't actually have the link so it, it would make more sense for me to say um, you know like and put the link right here just put HTTP colon slash slash webcast in the middle of the text um, to like I, I finished the sentence and I just say you can even browse through the webcast archive here colon and then you put the link kind of separate and I, I actually prefer in general to always put the link as a separate part outside of the paragraph I don't like it to be inside the paragraph because if it's in the paragraph they may miss it um, whereas it's pretty clear this is a link they can click on and it's outside the paragraph just so, to make it easier for some people, do you, would you suggest that they actually write their email in a notepad, copy it, put it into the text, then put it into the HTML, and then do the editing for the the links? Yes, do you think absolutely. That might be easier. Yep. So let, let's walk through that real quick. Now I use Linux, so my text editor will look a little different from yours. But most of you are going to be using Windows, so you would just click the little Start button down at the bottom and type in where you can type in a command to run it, you just type in notepad and hit enter. And you'll basically come up with the same kind of text editor that I have. It, it'll look a little different, behave a little bit different. Mine happens to have this little line right here that tells me where my margin is. And so that's where I would come in here and chop those lines off like this. 
um, and make sure I don't go past that margin for the text email part. And I want to put these bullets. Come down here and fix this margin again. And so now you'll notice that like everything is to the left of that margin. My URL is, it looks nice, looks correct. Um, I may want to tighten up the space between these bullet points. And then, you know, control A, select, or excuse me, right click and um, select all, right click again and do copy. Go into the text, control A. I like deleting everything off first and then right clicking and doing a paste and then there's my text. And then if we were following Lu what Louise was saying, that you, if you write it here first and you line your margin up correctly, paste it in to the text, then you can turn around and paste it in here into the HTML part and then sit here and dress it up, dress up just and the uh, HTML your coloring part. And, and your highlighting and things like that. Right. That probably might be a lot easier for, for a lot of people. That, so it's everything's right first in your notepad. You've got your, your email all sorted out. It's set out exactly like you like. You've got your links in there. So you paste it into the bottom, into the text, paste it into the top, into the HTML, and then just do your highlighting and your, your, your um, colouring if you, if you choose to do so. Yep, and then once you're done, I'm not going to save this because <laughs> I don't want to destroy <laughs> the email that I already had there. But you just click Save Changes, and it would the system will run off and, and save the email for you. And then, like I said, as people opt in through your Facebook link, um, or, you know, clicking on the Facebook button and coming in, your email that you typed in here is going to be sent to them. Now, I know a number of you are using 20 now like as a lead system. And um, you're letting me do all the webcasts. You don't. You're not interested in sending out emails. You're not interested in, um, you know, using the system in that sense to promote. You can just click. You can just leave this selected where it says use company default, and that it'll just continue to send the email. So if you're brand new, you, you just brand new set up an account, um, or you don't want to actually do a welcome email, no worries. Twenty now is automatically going to send it, and you actually have to come here to edit the welcome email page in order to change it and then it'll start using yours. And again, the way you do that is you hover over a member dashboard and you click on your welcome email. So I think that's, that probably... That, that, yeah, that's brilliant, Richard. Look, there's going to be so many people that do leave it, do leave it as you have set it up and that are not going to bother changing it in any way. But the, the first thing they should always change is the email with their image in it. They've got to start promoting themselves. And for other marketers that have been marketing for quite a while, we like to, I, I myself like to add a little bit of my personality into it. I like to tweak it and change it. You've got the basics of, their, of what we need to send out. And then I just add a little bit of my personality, introduce myself, and um, that, that's, that's brilliant. 